Hello, hi. Here we are. Once again, it is Friday. Uh, welcome to the Funcom uh, streaming room. See, we've got a chat thing on the side there too now, which is just cute uh, fun for me at least. Yeah. Uh, that's one of the things that we can do now with this new uh, stream uh, thing. All right. Uh, but I think I'm just gonna. That was kind of annoying because it's all in my face. I'm just gonna turn it off because we can still see the chat. Anywho, uh, welcome. Hello. Hope everyone's doing all right. It is Friday. Welcome to the Funcom Streaming Room. Hello, uh, everybody. Yes. Uh, I am Jens Edek, your community manager, joined by uh, Oscar, our lead designer. Hello. Uh, how's your week been, Oscar? It's been uh, pretty interesting so far. Uh -huh. Tried a little bit of uh, the new Pathfinder game. Yeah. Which um, it, it I really like. I like the Pathfinder system, and I want to see what they have done with that. And um, working on some interesting stuff here in-house as well. Um, that we will be able to talk about soon. Uh, awesome. It's cool. Uh, Normally, also haven't just followed. Thank you very much for following us on uh, Twitch. Uh, please let us know if the pop-ups get uh, annoying, because then we can change them until next time, because uh, we switched from OBS to Streamlabs OBS. So uh, we're, we're, we're trying it out, basically. And you know, if things are weird and in our faces and all that kind of stuff, then, uh, then it we'll has change a, it. It has more bells and whistles, and we it have to use all the yes, bells and exactly. whistles. Yes, exactly. We need to use all the bells and whistles. Uh, we, don't, uh, we don't have the whole, like, we don't have subscribers or anything yet, but uh, maybe uh, maybe sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. And uh, as uh, uh, Henke pointed out in chat, we're debt free now, says uh, uh, Rui, our CEO. I feel like on I feel floaty. It's like it's we, nice. We, we wait and drop. It's like oh, what happened? Yeah. Oh, that was oh, that's all the millions <laughs> in debt gone. Okay, that's great. <laughs> you can like just like oh, finally yeah. debt free. All right, moving forward. Night loud. Thank you so much for following us. Yeah. on uh, Twitch. Uh, unfortunately, it's only going to be Twitch alerts. It's not going to be uh, Mixture alerts because of uh, reasons. Streamlabs can only be connected to one account at the same time, I think. I'm going to figure that stuff out. We just recently switched over. James Fontaine, Tain, thank you so much for following us. Um, the Zatron, uh, we're going to run for maybe about an hour. It's going to be like a Q&A stream, so I'm not going to show much from the game, but we're going to talk about the game, uh, Conan Exiles, that being. So it's... Uh, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, the alert box is a bit big, so I can just uh, scale that down just a tad. There we go, so it doesn't go up in Oscar's face. Um, so yeah, we're testing stuff out, and it's a Q and A stream. And uh, what's been happening? Well, we've been uh, still working on the pet system, uh, working on some uh, bugs and exploits. We uh, fixed a. I'd call it fairly huge uh, exploit recently on uh, PC. Uh, Which one of them? The one <laughs> people were using to uh, get around uh, damage and rage, raid mm, timers, that and all that kind of stuff. Hmm. The one that no one liked. Uh, so we got rid of that. Um, I think that's that's good to yes. get rid of that. <laughs> and uh, we're working on some other ones um, that uh, you guys have. Uh, so helpfully told us about through Exploit Hunters. But um, I don't think I'm going to spend that much time talking about that. No. We'll, um, we'll talk about the, each individual fix as we put them out, or we are ready to show them or whatever. Yeah. And um, we, we are always a little bit careful with um, divulging exploit information, because obviously it has the potential to ruin the game experience for yeah. a lot of people that don't know about the exploit, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> and this is, this is why it's important that you guys um, let us know about these things. If it starts uh, running around um, their rumor mill kind of thing, mm -hmm. and it becomes a de facto behavior in the game to exploit a certain a certain broken mechanic, then, well, exploit hunters can really help us catch these things early and stop them before they become a bigger problem. Yes. But then it would take much longer to fix for us, and it would be much more expensive to address. Yep. So, exploit hunters, good thing. Do you know any exploits? Please let us know. It's very good. All right. So uh, this is a Q&A stream. So on our forums, we had a uh, big thread that opened up yesterday. It closed mm. this morning. We had about uh, 70 posts, I think, in that thread. And some of you guys had one question. Some of you guys had a lot of questions. So in total, it was it was a lot. Um, so we're not going to be able to answer every single question you guys asked us. Um, luckily, a lot of you asked 
the same questions. Oh, I'm dropping pens now, uh, so I should stop doing that. Uh, luckily, a lot of you asked the same questions, so hopefully we'll be able not, to... It's not shuriken, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like, oh, it's <laughs> in the camera now. <laughs> so we're going to be able to answer uh, some of it, at least. And so I've uh, uh, written them all down. So I think maybe we should That's just... a big list. That is, that is a big list. It is three pages. I don't think we're going to be able to... That's three pages, and it's a very small font. <laughs> it's size 11. All right, let's, think. let's all right. get cracking, then. All right. Um, you might not get to everything, but we're going to try at least. Um, so first things first, which I think people on the stream is, is wondering about, uh, is uh, mounts and sorcery. Wow, straight to the point. Straight to the point. So big things first. All right. Right now, we are trying to finish the work that we're doing on the pet patch, what we have been calling the pet patch this whole time, which is actually very large and it includes a lot more many things than the pet stuff um i mean i guess a lot of you were here when uh, some weeks ago when we tried to put this in the test live server for the first time and that didn't really go so well and that that moment where uh, the moment was when we realized okay we, we need to you know take a deeper look at what we're doing we need to uh, increase the general level of quality of the stuff that we're doing and this means that we had to spend more time working on things. Yeah. And we need to stay flexible with our deliverables, right? And I know that this is this is maybe not a popular thing for some people, but you need to look at it this way. If if we speed things up in order to get more stuff up there, yeah. the stuff that we put up there is going to be of lesser quality. That's just the way it goes, right? So um, the mounts on the sorcery system have been in the pipe for quite a long time now. They were in the pipe before launch. Mm -hmm. There were some technical problems with uh, with mounts in particular that helped with the decision of you know delaying this. Um, it's it's exactly the same now. These things are in the pipe. We don't know exactly when we will be able to start touching on them. Uh, we know that they are. I mean, they are two of our kind of big. Yeah. big features that we want to address at some point but we don't know yet and we want to we will we will not start working on these features until we are done with the big features we're working on right now yeah right this is where that compromise comes in you want if you want to put out higher quality more stable more refined highly highly polished big features then you need to do less of them yeah right so um, I, I know you guys want specific news about when we're going to do the mounts when we're going to do sorcery are we when doing we're going to do pets when we're going to do anything exactly are we doing those things or not are we doing siege updates what are we doing right yeah. um the answer is uh, we would like to do all of those things but the realities of development are that well we have to do them one by one when is the right time for them yeah so i guess I kind of give you the answer you want to hear, which is, yes, we're starting working on this tomorrow. This, no, that's not happening. We are finishing pets first, and then we're going to look at what's going to be our kind of big update. Right? Yeah. We have an order in which we would like to address them. And Joel touched on this in an interview he did a couple of weeks ago. Yes. I mean, there is an order that we would like to follow, but things sometimes get thrown out of order, and, and we don't really want to commit to any particular date yeah. or, or anything. So. That's it for mounts and, and sorcery. Right. Um, I, mean, I, I don't yeah. want to get too deep into how those systems would work. Uh, we had given some thought about, we had given a lot of thought <laughs> about how specifically the sorcery system um, would work. But I don't really want to get too deep into that because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to tell you things that then might look differently later. Yeah. Right? So I, I don't want to commit to anything. I don't want to bring your hopes high about how things are going to work when we haven't even started seriously <laughs> yeah. working on them. So that's it. Uh, Perster in the <clears throat> Twitch chat had a suggestion that after we've done with pets, we should just toss a coin. And then if it's heads, it mounts, if it's tails, it's sorcery. The problem with that <laughs> is that you end up having to like make a giant six month long feature if the coin shows up as tails. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're stuck. And you know what? I, I don't know about you, but I like tossing coins it's a nice little dopamine release yeah. so yeah. yeah one every six months sounds a bit insufficient yes perhaps it should be something bigger than a coin like a car <laughs> then we need someone able to flip a car all right like the hulk <laughs> uh 
All right. Uh, next up, a lot of people asked this question: uh, if there were any plans for dual wielding of other weapons, rather other than just you know a um, a sword, a mace, or a axe, and then a throwing axe. And then following up to that, there were also a lot of people asking if we're planning on adding any new weapon types. All right. Dual wielding. Okay. Let me talk first about new weapon types. Um, possibly yes. Um, we are. <sighs> At some point right after release, I wasn't really that keen on adding new weapon types to the game because I wanted to get a feeling of the, what you guys like calling the meta game, right? Mm -hmm. The dynamics of PvP and the dynamics of different weapon type usage before we made any more weapon types. They have the, a new weapon type has the ability to shake things around quite strongly, right? So we need to be careful with that because shaking things around is not always necessarily a good thing right so what we did instead is we looked at weapon ties slowly one by one and did tiny little adjustments here and there and there's still some of those that are in the pipe that uh, we are testing internally for example we're testing i think i mentioned this in another stream already but um, we're testing a, a little thing to with spears to try to taper the dodge cancelling of invisible hits behavior that we see like people rightly with the spear and then before you even have a chance to get the, the network message about yeah the, the hit landing on you they have already dodged and then they macro this and it's just it, it's just not really fun at all to get hit by an invisible hitbox right so we're looking at little things like that uh, in that spirit we implemented throwing axes and shields yep that's the reason that we implemented throwing axes and shields the way we did it we wanted to shake things out just a bit and address specifically issues with um people being scared to commit to full combos because they get blocked and then they get punished mm -hmm. so the shield actually gives you shield smash to to stop that and people running away too easily so that's why the throwing axe cripples on everything right Moving forwards, we might do more little adjustments like that. Um, we might fix animation here or there. Um, and we might also come up with entirely new weapons. I know people is partial of 200 axes uh, because it's a very kind of barbarian thing. Oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are other, other weapon types that we also, that we have looked at that we think they're exciting and people will also like, but I'm not ready to make any, any more comments about that. I guess the, the, the high line here is, yes, we are open to add more weapon types to the game, even to the point of, you know, shaking the meta a little bit. Yeah. I think we're in a good spot now where we can, you know, let's take a look at spear dominance. Let's take a look at 100 maces and why nobody uses them. Mm -hmm. Like axes are now okay, but mm, maybe maybe that opener could, could get a little work, that kind of stuff, right? And about dual wielding, which was the other part of the question. We don't really have any plans right now to add the ability to put kind of random weapons in your offhand. Uh, there, this is mostly due to how the action bar interface works. Right. So this is something we discussed during development. And this is also how we ended up with daggers the way they are. We can make it so you can just equip dual swords and dual swords are one item just like daggers are one item but it's two daggers we actually now have the tech to do that and put whatever mesh we want to put on your offhand and do hit detection and stuff but, <laughs> but um but we don't actually have the tech to allow you to put whatever you want in your main hand and then whatever you want in your offhand and it's actually pretty tricky when you think about how you would make that work with the action more paradigm. Just grab a gamepad, for example, and try to figure out how you would equip only your offhand but not the main hand. You had to add this kind of boolean toggle. You had to add toggles and keep a state yeah. and try to guess what the player is trying to do. It gets complicated. And, and we don't have any plans to change the paradigm for the action bar. We don't have plans to allow you to put things directly in your offhand in a paper doll screen or whatever. So. Yeah. So no, I don't think I don't think we will uh, work. I don't think we will do offhand swords or mango shares or cutlasses or like bridge the wooden double scimitars and stuff. <laughs> At least we might do double scimitars. Like you equip a double scimitar, like Dark Souls does this. Oh yeah, like it's it is right? one item and then you pull out that two. we might do. And right. that basically is like it's a new weapon type. It's like you guys want two hundred axes or you want you want dual scimitars, right? 
or do we want to put 200 axes or do we want to put dual symmetries? So that's it. There's a, basically it's a combination of technical issues and it's just the way the, the kind of equipment management works in the game and right. how your hands your hands work in the game, right? It's a system that is difficult to, to do things strictly to the offhand, basically. Yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of <clears throat> dual wielding, uh, okay. <laughs> more speaking of dual wielding, <laughs> yeah, Sierra Nine and a lot of other people asked, yeah, because um, you sort of went into this already. Like, uh, why can't you wield a torch and thrall bindings at the same time? Because like the thrall binding and the torch all go in the left hand, while the truncheon goes in the right hand, and it's sort of it's sort of stuck there. Like you can't have a torch in your right hand, for example, because we're not doing the whole paper doll right hand left hand okay you put, the torch goes in the off hand because we didn't want to limit people to choose between light or, or combat that's why the torch is in the off hand right um as i just described we don't actually have the ability to let you put the torch in whatever hand you want right the torch needs to go in one hand it cannot be you choose if you want it in the main or the off hand because i mean if we had that we could do dual wielding right we don't have that so uh when we thought about this, okay, do, do we prefer people walking around with a torch and a shield or with a torch and bindings? Or do we prefer people being able to actually fight things mm -hmm. and have the torch? And we just chose that the torch is more useful or is more limiting when you don't kind of do combat with it than when you can. Yeah. So that's it. So um, the bindings have, it's a similar thing. Bindings are, it's basically the same concept. It's, it's more like when you're going back to your base, while dragging around this poor soul that you're going to turn into your thrall, do we want people to be able to fight or not? And we do want people to be able to fight because you might get attacked by a random ostrich or hyena or whatever, and yeah. it, it would suck if you had to drop the thrall and then attack, right? To, so yeah, that's why we decided to do that. So it's a, it's a practical, they're basically practical considerations. Also, you can attach with the thrall, attack, sorry, not attach. You can attack with the thrall with your block pattern, sorry, with the torch. This is my head. <laughs> you can attack with the torch, English, good. <laughs> attack with the torch with your block button. And that uses the same mechanics that we have for shields. And we thought that also made sense. Yeah. You choose between what, at some point, someday might become fire damage or setting things on fire or whatever, or being able to block. And that's also a tactical choice that you have to make, yeah. right? And of course, when you're in a cave, you have to give up the ability to block. And that's also interesting. I mean, it could have gone the other way. You give up the ability to attack, but I mean, we thought this was more interesting. Sure. Yeah. Or if you get the, the uh, what is it, Jedi's Great Saber or something, then you have a, yeah. <laughs> well, then that's a two-handed sword. So yeah. you lose the ability to use torches, but it, it glows in the dark. So, yeah. Um, we also talk at some point about having lanterns that you could hang from your belt. For example, yes, like in uh, Bloodborne. That, yeah, like uh, yeah, Bloodborne. You always have the the little lantern, right? right? Um, or many many other games do, like the glowy stone, glowy green stone, or whatever. Um, we ended up not doing that, and because we thought that you know the the kind of limiting choices that you have to make when you want to use a torch are actually interesting, right? Uh, I mean, they might be annoying at some points, but it's also interesting in many other occasions. So we just okay. Sometimes sometimes. Gameplay limitations actually enhance the experience and it puts you in situations where you have to choose and having to choose and then choosing correctly and being rewarded for it feels good. So that's that's why we never, you know, just went ahead and implemented lanterns. Yep. All right. Um, another one from a lot of people is asking about the character creator and if we're going to be adding more hairstyles, more facial hair, uh, different face option, facial options, and um, all that kind of stuff, if the character um, creator is expanding in any way. I don't actually know. Uh, possibly. Uh, we could expand what we have there. If there's a big demand for that, we could just expand it. There's no... Technically, we could, but I don't, I don't think we have any plans to do it right now. Um, do you guys think there's not enough... I guess you do think there's not enough options if you're asking for if we're gonna add more. <laughs> yeah, that is uh, yes, please. yes, please, exactly. See, Rawr. people want it. There were uh, I think it was like caps. five oh, or caps. six people in that. More thread. hair. I want more hair too. That would be nice. Yeah, more hair, more <laughs> facial hair. We'll just we'll have Jenny just take care of that. She's like super. Yeah, we call the the fairies. See, it's all <laughs> eye color. Do it. Hair, more hair, etc., etc., etc. Also, uh, actually, this is a wood gun up here. Uh, Clevani says, appearance is nice, but those in-game can't change them. Yes. Uh, 
See, that's the kind of option I would lean towards. Okay. I'd rather, I'd rather give people the ability to alter their appearance than just put more appearances in for just just for the sake of having more appearances. Right. Uh, both solutions taper to different kind of people, but I guess I'm more of like a systems guy in that regard. And I lean towards, hey, you know what? You want to, you know, make a proper serious character now. You don't want to have purple hair and giant boobs anymore. It's, okay, you can fix it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, by the way, that this does not confirm any sort of no, like I'm just saying, facial change potion, by the way. I'm just saying <laughs> just, that is a great suggestion yes. and is the kind of suggestion I would actually lean towards. Yes. We're not confirming or denying anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Ruck12 asked, um, how will the bows work after you have revamped them? And I saw a couple of people asking that in, in chat as well, which is why I, I yes, picked bows. it. Uh, will they have a damage increase to make them more useful? What other changes will be made to the bow? We have been working in both. <laughs> we have been working in both. Yes. I guess it is not a surprise for people that follow the, the stream regularly. Yes. But um, we have been working in both quite a lot. So, yes, we are changing things with both. <laughs> um, it's not, I mean, don't expect super dramatic, like, oh my god, both now shoot stars or whatever. Yeah. Um, but uh, we are changing the mechanics of, of the right click on both. We are also looking at the damage they do. Um, we were doing some play testing with uh, bow mechanics in general and with the bow damage output in general the other day. Uh, we were running um, the Jebasak dungeon in a group of four people, for example. And we try, we, when we play test, we try different kind of group setups, right? So in that specific evening, I was the archer. Yeah. I was actually playing as the archer. It was a complete archer dedicated role. I didn't I didn't even carry on a weapon. I just had a bow and and two thousand arrows. <laughs> that you was were, you were Legolas. And and food well Legolas doesn't need arrows. <laughs> that's that's just for mortals, right? He just pulls them out of hammer space. Like, yeah, he pulls them out Arrow of like, space. <laughs> like the Valar just gave them to him. Yeah. So um I was the archer and I was specifically trying to test, okay, what's going on with this? Is it like I, I've read about, about a lot of feedback about bows are not strong. They're not powerful enough. Um, I think bows were doing great in that run. Of course, it requires, I mean, the group was basically one tank, one melee DPS, which was, um, I think it was a 200 spear. Right. Or 200, 200 sword, depending, like he would switch. Um, one um, kind of hybrid melee TP, off tank DPS guy, which was like 100 weapons and sometimes a shield, sometimes a throwing axe, right? And me as the archer. And um, I was doing a ton of damage. I was uh, I was destroying things from a distance. We did then a max level run where we all had star metal or, or obsidian or whatever. Each person chose whatever they wanted. And max builds, so we could test if we could break it, mm -hmm. right? Which is also, also something we do. And I was one-shotting. I was one shotting every human NPC in the dungeon with headshots with a bow dedicated build. One shot in them. All of them. Yes, you hit the head, they're dead. In in the internal playtest. In the internal playtest. Yeah. So and this is this is before the changes that we had done to bows. Yeah. So I am not actually convinced that <laughs> we have to do major damage changes to bows. But we're buffing them. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> we're buffing them a little bit. So we're buffing the right click mechanism because it's a bit of a more involved mechanism now. Right. Um, it's also so easier to land headshots with it now. Yeah. But expect to see a little increase there. But we're not, I, I'm not changing the baseline damage of bows right now. I think bows are very undervalued. And I think they have a very, very strong role in the game, and they can be very, very powerful by people that know what they're doing with them. So yeah, I don't, this is one of this is an example of one of those things where you go ahead and you change something dramatically, and you just break you made it entirely, <laughs> right? So yeah. So yeah, and uh, as we've said a couple of times already, like the the um, um, the power shot is coming back. Like you'll be able to. Hold your bow. You can hold it, and then you release. Yes, it's none of that. You know the. We'll it, do. We're removing what we have now, and we're adding in what we had before. Yes, so we with, with some changes. We're altering the, the actual behavior of the bow, the mechanics of the bow, 
and um, uh, we'll have a we'll have a highlight stream where we talk about this in detail. Yes. We don't uh, we don't need to leave, give more details now. Yeah, there's going to be a bow stream yeah. in some time. <laughs> Not just bows, also throwing axes and javelins. Yes. By the way, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Moving on to uh, dungeons, uh, which some people in the thread also asked about, uh, because we're working on a couple of new ones. Uh, a couple the, of a couple of new ones. A couple of new ones. A couple. <laughs> a couple. Uh, a few. I can't say how many, but, mm. but some. I can. Um, I was given permission to say oh, how you many. Were. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, would you like to say how many? <laughs> yes. Because like it's the midnight would, grove. Would you which, wanna? Would you wanna finish your sentence first? Yeah. Cause, like the midnight grove is on is on test live now. But we're we're doing other ones, and uh, someone was asking if they're going to be the uh, length of uh, what we currently have, or it's, if it's going to be uh, shorter, like the Witch Queen dungeon, for example. Yeah. And if there are any plans to enhance the existing ones, because I saw a couple of players, for example, saying that you can uh, just uh, pelt the uh, uh, abyssal remains, for example, from a distance with snake arrows, and then it just dies. Um, one player has also pointed out that killing dungeon bosses feel uh, feels a bit tedious, feels not challenging. Yeah, um, I agree. And yeah, you agree. Um, and like while you do get unique crafting materials, like you can just sort of run past them and get the recipe for whatever they uh, whatever they give from like a tablet or something. So are we like yeah? What is so we're we're, we're improving some things there. Not all of the things that you mentioned, but some we're improving. Um, Dungeons, uh, they're, they're all pretty long, I think. Um, we are working on five dungeons right now at the same time, Jeez. if you include the Jebel Sag dungeon. Um, so that's Jebel Sag, which is going to come out with the pet update that it's in test life right now. And four more. We are actually working on four dungeons right now. Right. They are all. They all have different themes. They are all in different locations. They have bosses and they have trash mobs and they have very interesting setups that are very different. So that's happening right now. So it's not. A, it's not a couple. It's four. Right. Plus your sack. Uh, the Java sack dungeon. We actually have done quite a lot of changes, um, which I think should be getting should be hitting test life soon. Very soon. Yeah. Uh, to not only um, some of the boss, some of, some of the monsters' um, hit points and damage values and stuff like that. Like for example, we're making gorillas be more like tanky but do less damage, mm -hmm. but they're gaining poise because otherwise it's just a joke. You can just hit them and they never get to do anything, and they, that looks silly right. on a gorilla. Right? Yeah. So we are we're not touching saber to cats, by the way. Which you, you, they're nasty. They are destroyed they're dangerous. me. They destroyed me two weeks ago. Yes, you need to be careful with yeah. them. You can't really get hit by them. But you can also choose between going the gorilla path or the saber tooth path. Sure. So yeah. saber tooth cats are actually on purpose very um, weak. Like they don't have a lot of hit points. Right. That's what I mean with weak. But they do a lot of damage. Gorillas are they have more hit points, but they do less damage. Right. So you can choose your path. So it depends on your group. You can choose one or another. Right. This is why there's multiple paths in the dungeon. So for bosses, we are also adjusting uh, the bosses not only mechanically, uh, but also like you know some of them are gonna get poise, some of them are gonna get uh, taunt thrown in, mm -hmm. some of them are gonna lo lose some of the taunts. The werewolf boss has gone. He's got a completely new sequencing of his attacks because it was a very unfair, it was a brutal, unfair fight. Right. So we changed the way he behaves to kind of create a better, you know, okay, this is your opportunity to attack. That was already there, but we're emphasizing that. The bull also, tons of damage reduction because it was, I mean, it wasn't unfair. Right. It wasn't fair, sorry, that it would just charge you and, and to shot you in the air. Yeah. Like, that is okay. I get it with me. Yes. So we're doing adjustments like that, and it, we are going to do those kind of adjustments to all the dungeons. Working forwards, we will do this to every single dungeon, right? I mean, it's not... The bosses are not going to... are not really going to be giant multi-phase encounters with, like, ad spawns and, and now hug, now spread mechanics and uh, yeah. all the stuff that you expect not to see in an MMO, right? That's that's not what they're gonna look like, but but we didn't like the level of quality uh, that under which we have them, and we're trying to improve them as much as we can. Yeah, right. This goes so again back to uh, do we want to do a lot or do we want to do good? Sure. Yeah. Right. So this is why the pet 
the pet update is delayed and why we are taking our sweet time to put it out and the, the same goes for the Yellow Side Dungeon, right? Yeah, the Zatron agrees with you. Do not turn bosses into WoW Raid bosses. Uh, WoW Raid bosses are excellent. Is uh, In my opinion, is the absolute best uh, boss encounter design in the gaming world, period. For a multiplayer co-op kind right. of 20 people thing is absolutely excellent. Top of the line, you cannot beat it. Yeah. But we're not WoW, this is not WoW. That's not what we're aiming for. Right, it, the, the game even hardly the game struggles to support more than, than three guys fighting the same thing at the same time. It's not that kind of game. Right, right. It's, it's not an MMO. So, so yeah, bosses need to cater to what players can do, and they need to work in mostly in single player. Even though dungeons are not actually designed for single player, but they they need to be killable by by people that don't have ten years of rate training. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's also ridiculously expensive to make a boy, uh, boss encounter like the ones you find in WoW. It's people often underappreciate the amount of work involved in making something like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it should be mentioned that when we say uh, that it like that we're working on several dungeons, it means that they're in like different they're processes all... of being made. Like some of them are still in concepting phase, I would assume, and some of them are being built by like level designers. And yeah, it's like it's a pipe, artists. like everything else. Except yeah. except there's a little bit of uh, multiplexing on this one, so. We do have um, one dungeon is uh, going to enter playtesting phase very, very soon. Mm -hmm. The next dungeon is um, about 80% of the way to yeah. entering playtest phase. Then the, the other one is about 60%, and the last one is in concepting phase. Concepting sure. phase right now. But we, we have gray box levels and and proper designs for it and, and some working mechanics even on the last one which is basically still in concept so yeah, yeah we're working on them all at the same time yep. uh, Crow the Shaman asks my next question which is interesting um, what are we doing about uh, voice over IP because I know this is uh, very important for uh, role players and it's very important for people who don't necessarily use things like Discord or Skype or anything like that to, to talk to each other, they just use voice over IP. And right now it, it's a bit, it can be a bit choppy at times. So I do agree about the importance of having a, a way to communicate beyond text, uh, especially if you're trying to create a role-playing environment, right? It's difficult to just stop and type and stuff. Um, but sadly, I don't, I don't actually have any news about voice over IP. Um, it's, it's a very difficult piece of technology, and um, we don't really have any current plans to improve it from what we have right now. Okay. So, sorry, that's kind of as the doser in the bunch. Yeah. Is uh, um, we we agree that it's not as good as it as we would have wanted it to be, but we don't have any immediate plans immediate plans to fix it. Maybe later down the line, but okay. Yep. Um, <coughs> Josh Sanders and others asks, uh, since PlayStation recently announced that it will allow cross-platform play to select third-party games, are we considering letting PS4 players play with Xbox One and PC players? Uh, right now, we don't have any cross-platform at all. Uh, PC players play with PC players, Xbox players play with Xbox players, and PS4 players play with uh, PS4 players. Um, those... I would assume that it's going to stay that way? I would assume so, too. Yeah. Because those kind of that kind of crossover is it's like... It's a very difficult thing to accomplish, and it's, it has nothing to do with technology. Well, it has some to do with technology, mm -hmm. uh, because they use entirely different servers, entirely different um, um, login systems, and, and character like player recognition systems, like unique IDs and stuff. Yeah. So there is work involved on bridging that gap, but there is also a lot of, you know, commercial agreements and publishing agreements that need to happen before that is a reality, and um, those are expensive. And, and even though Xbox and, and both Sony and Microsoft can be very keen to do this kind of thing yeah. in some special cases, uh, it's, still, it's still not a straightforward thing to do. So um, I, I don't really know if we are looking at doing cross-platform, but I don't think so. so okay. Yeah. Uh, here's a quick one, maybe. Uh, Redforged Steel and a bunch of others asked, uh, <coughs> as space is sometimes limited and five pet pens are huge, uh, why not have single pet pens? Or why are pens so big? Yeah, or yeah. why are pens big? 
Well, pens are big because sometimes you have to fit big animals in there, like a rhino. The reason we don't have single pens is because we expected you guys to to try to tame multiple pets at the same time. Right. Even even our entry point is scenario, which is you are basically making kappas and some hyenas. Even our entry point scenario had players working on multiple pets at the same time, right? We also wanted to create uh, this this illusion of okay, your stable is kind of like a big part of your base. It's like think on it on it as if as if you're building a town, right? I mean, yes, you can have a stable for your one horse attached to your house, but uh, typically you will find a stable with horses, right? Right. Yeah. So we went with that kind of scenario. And unfortunately, maybe they are just too big and too cumbersome to place, right? There was no particular intent on making them difficult to place. That doesn't make sense. But there was intent on making them be a bigger part of the scenery right. or your base. Yeah. Just like the vault is a big part of your scenery and they don't need to be that big. We just made it that big because it's supposed to be the core of your base. Yeah. Right? So not the core of your 1,000 bases spread all over the game. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's the same thing with pens. Um, so I don't know, maybe at some point in the future we'll make um, single pens, but um, that's the reasoning we followed, right? Right now, as far as I know, we don't have any plans to to break them down into individual pieces. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, Mllor, <coughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. M L L O R. Like this. Mllor. 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 M L L O R. It's Quenya. It's Elvish. It's Mllor. Right. This comes up a lot. And it has to do with thralls. Uh, have you considered the possibility of adding a button to change thrall temperament between aggressive and passive? Uh, it becomes It's very annoying when thralls attack or don't attack independently of what you want to do. All right, there's a bunch of things coming in about that. Um, not specifically the ability to set if they're going to be aggressive or passive, even though we might do that anyways. But what is coming very, very soon is that um, First of all, thralls will assist you. They will aggro things that you aggro. Right. Um, so the thrall doesn't need to be hit, be hit anymore, and you don't actually have to hit anything. If you get hit, then the thrall will try to assist. Right. Right. Um, also, we are adding the ability for thralls to kind of to enter what we are calling a scouting mode. Right. Which is you can tell a thrall to follow you. And then the thrall will just, you know, like you're going in to, together, whatever. And then you tell the thrall, all right, dude, stop following now, right? Uh, currently, dude will actually say, okay, this is my new home. Mm -hmm. And then you go back to your base, and this guy is stranded in the middle of nowhere. And he's just going to stay there. Right. And then that's it. He's not going to return to your base or anything. What we're doing now is that you can say, hey, dude, why don't you just, you know, stop following? And then he's going to stay here, but he's not going to go back to your base. Right. Oh, sorry, he's not going to set this as a new home, right? If you then leave and forget about this guy, he will actually go back to your base. Okay. Yeah. This also, this approach also, which is a, it might sound like it's a little subtle thing, but it basically allows you to set temporary scouts because these trolls will actually do event log notifications. I will talk about the event log because right. we have things coming for that also. So this guy is basically scouting for you. He's not moving around, you know, like peering to the horizon or whatever. But he's basically standing there until until he gets tired. Right. And then when he gets tired, which is, I think, 10 minutes now, he will say, you know what? I Screw guess this. if you don't want me to follow you anymore, yeah. I'll just go back home. Right. Players can also say, hey, stop following me, and this is your new home. So you tell the thrall specifically, make this your new home. Yeah. That needs to follow the rules of placement for thralls. Which is not the case for scouting. You can scout into someone else's place, right. right? But you tell them to guard, which is how we're calling that. Mm -hmm. Then that's the new home, and then you can go do whatever. And the guy is just is as if you it's walk there, there and yeah. you place him there, right? Yeah. Right, or her, or her, or yeah. it, if he's a panther. Yeah. Well, panthers are also technically his, like he or she. Is. <laughs> a kappa, huh? Well, kappas are also male and female. Never Sh mind. Forget about genders. It's fine. Shellbacks. <laughs> yes, shellbacks. So. That's gonna come in. That's already implemented. It's uh, we're testing it. It's gonna yeah. come in very very soon actually. Yes, Palm. You can make it thrall stay there and not move. He just yes. covered that. 
Yes. Yes. In fact, you cannot actually make them stay there and move. <laughs> right. So they're not <laughs> going to be patrolling or anything like that. They're just going to stay there. They will behave exactly as if, as if that was their home, but it's not their home. Right. Yeah. It's like they have a temporary home that lasts for 10 minutes. Right? Sure. So yeah. that's it. That also fixes issues with throws getting stuck. Because when throws get aggro by something, like I go tonight when I attack your base and right. pull, pull all your throws out of your wall and bring them over there to the river creek or whatever and then disconnect. Yeah. Right now, those guys will get stuck because they don't know how to get back home. Yeah. And they're trying, right? With this system, they will not. They will all be in a temporary scouting state. And the temporary scouting state. If they cannot get back home from that state, right. they will eventually they will try different levels of quality, but eventually they will end up teleporting back home. Okay, cool. Right. So thralls are not gonna get stranded anymore. Yeah. Yeah. They will only get stranded if you tell them to get stranded. Otherwise, yeah, they will if you just tell them like, hey, stay here, they will and eventually will stay there forever. Go back home, right? Right. Something else that we're adding also is we're adding an event log. We're improving the event log that we already have. Yes. Which will include a ton of different types of notifications and entries that try to inform you about what the hell is going on with your thralls. So if, you, if your thrall got killed by someone, mm -hmm. you will see in the event log. Right. If your thrall got um, died of hunger, for example, because you told it to follow and you tell him to camp or guard over there, and then he's now outside of the feeder radius, so you, forgot, you forget about him for two weeks, and yeah. the guy's dead now. So you will get an entry, right? So the idea there is to create a situation where the event log can serve also as a source of intel right? about what's happening to your base. Yeah. So spreading throws in scouting positions over the map or whatever actually provides you with intel. Yeah. That's why we call it scouting. Sure. Right. These guys still report. Right? And then this new uh, event log, you'll be able to scroll back. You can do uh, filters. Yeah. And we're, we're still working on the, on the UX, on the... Um, on the user experience, the, the UI side of things. Mm -hmm. But yes, we want to add filters so you can filter based on the type of event. And yes, of course, you can scroll because otherwise, I mean, this thing is going to be full. If, if your base gets raided, this event log is going to be large. You will get notifications for every single piece that you lose. Yes. You will get notifications for every single item that you, you lose. If someone goes and steals stuff on your chest, you will have an entry for per thing that they steal. <laughs> and this is important for us. We want to make sure that when something happens to your assets, you know what it was, you know what happened. Right. So you have certainty. This is very important for us, and I think it's important for the players too. So you cannot, you know, you can, for example, commit to creating a larger base without being constantly scared about, is it gonna go away go from a bug overnight? And if stuff disappears, you will know what happened. You don't have to be paranoid or anxious about the admins of this server toying with us, yeah. right? Or if it's a bug, or if it was the raid, or if it was another player, or... Exactly, yeah. you, you will get all that information. So it's important for us that there is certainty on the state of the game for players. The players know what happened to the assets because that's the only way where we can build ownership. Right. right. You're not going to invest on a ginormous minus Tirith construction sure. if you're not certain of what happens to it when suddenly a chunk is gone. Yeah. Right? And if a chunk is gone because of a bug, then we'll need to work on fixing that. Yeah. But we want players to be certain that it was not a bug. It was some dude that raided you last night. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yes. Um, someone also mentioned that uh, for this new event log, being able to rename uh, thralls would help like differentiate who is where and, and what we're looking into that we're one. looking into renaming um pets and thralls both of them um that's all i can say we're looking into it that's okay. that's a couple of uh little issues with that like for example how restrictive we want to be with what kind of things you can name your thrall right and different platforms handle that differently like for example in xbox and playstation they already have a system where you can even type things that they consider inappropriate right but then there's i mean that's a line they draw and then the question is should we care about our own line or not i i lean towards we shouldn't care i mean if you're playing in a private server with with people then you guys can you know you can just talk to each other and set the rules for yeah. what's offensive and what isn't yeah and, and we're not here to police that you're playing on an official server, 
then you know what kind of stuff you should expect. Yeah. And if you're playing in a in a safer environment like Xbox or PlayStation, which is safer than Steam, Steam has barely any any language filters or whatever, right? Then well, then you're already safe. Yeah. And if you're on Steam, then well, that's that's the world today. You're out there in the internet, right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. And this event log, will it have um, timestamps that people can see when something happened? I assume so. Yeah, I think so too. Actually, do you know what? Uh, yes. I'll, to <laughs> I'll talk to the, to the guys working on this. We haven't talk to actually, Mar Marson, yeah. We haven't actually talked about timestamps because I think everyone just assumes so. Yes. Or how would you? Yes. You need to know when it happened. Yes. Yes. yes it's going to have timestamps. <laughs> All yeah. right. Uh, <laughs> by J, I'm gonna pronounce it by J because I'm not gonna pronounce it the other way. <laughs> like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Uh, B I J A Y. Ah. So by J, yes. Like okay. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's like so. two J's, two birds. Yeah. Uh, do you really categorically exclude ever integrating new building pieces, uh, building tiles into the game? There are many suggestions for mm. new building pieces like two times. Uh, 2x2 gates, uh, steeper ramps, half block foundations, etc. Mm. Or will there be uh, hope for us builders that Funcom will expand the possibilities of the building system in the future? And I know that came up a bunch in chat as well, which is why I'm jumping to it. Yes. Um, no, we have no particular reason to uh, artificially limit the different building types that we have. Right. Uh, we created a tile set which uh, we then expanded actually quite dramatically with a lot of corner building options, for example, and triangle building options. Yeah. The fact that we actually added triangles and squares, I think that, that was something that we added because we wanted to increase the, the freedom for people to build whatever, right? Also because it creates pretty interesting, this is my personal thing. Sure. Yeah. It creates pretty interesting geometry problems to yeah. solve. It's like, Damn it, how did it end up with a 60 degree angle? Okay. <laughs> so, um, no, we're not against adding new building piece types. It becomes more expensive as we, as we progress and we keep adding new skins for these pieces. Yeah. Especially, especially if we then want to have full coverage. Like, we have, I don't know how many different skins we have now. It's like seven or eight, I think. Um, so we like started we said, with three, and then we added two more for um, for for the Frozen North. And then yes. we added one more with Kitai, and then we added one more with Aquilonia. So we're, yeah, we're up to seven yes. now. And then th there might be more coming. <laughs> so so this becomes problematic because every time you add a new type of piece, right? Not only you have to create the rules for it, which depending on this piece, they are very complex, but. I mean, if we insist on having full coverage and people will want their Aquilonian triple corner staircase inverted curve thing right. to look Aquilonian, right? Then this becomes a problem for the art pipeline. Right. Right. But um, we don't have to do that if people is willing to accept that there's no full coverage, right? Sure. So, no. Uh, from a gameplay, from a design standpoint, there's no... We're not against adding new building types. There is... Something to say, though, about simplicity on the system, I mean, keeping it minimalistic, Yeah. right? Um, and that is why we know at some point we have to draw a line and say, okay, this should be enough. Yeah. Right. yeah. This building set should actually cover most of the cases, and the rest of the cases, they can improvise. So right. if you look at Minecraft, they have one building piece type. Yeah, it's a, it's a block. It's That's always it. a block. It's a block. You can yeah. be safe with blocks, and they kind of behave like pixels in that case, but... People get really creative and they do some crazy things with just blocks. Yeah. Right. We, of course, obviously wanted to offer much more than that. But I mean, I also really like seeing what people come up with. Like I've seen boats made with um, yeah with our building pieces, which just look absolutely amazing. So yes. Yeah. I, uh, I was going to say that people like already are able to build some really uh, amazing things that I haven't been able to imagine yet. So I, I am much more concerned with um, people. It being impossible for people to try certain angles of construction mm -hmm. than people to have exactly the, the solution for every little bit every little case right if there is if there is a if we see that people's behavior is to try to start building i don't really know because we actually cover a lot of them already but i don't know inverted spiral staircases that you're supposed to monkey bar down from or whatever yeah and we need to support a spiral staircase of some sort to to empower them to do that, then yeah, we, yeah. then I would say, yeah, go, let's go, let's add a spiral staircase. But um, until then, I think again, this is back, goes back to 
limitations sometimes actually enhance gameplay. Right. Right. We try to provide a, a tile set that that gives you all the tools that you need. If there's any tool that you guys are directly missing, then tell us and we will look at it. Yeah, I'm, I'm betting now in like 30 seconds, chat is just going to be full of, like, <laughs> we want these kinds of pillars and we want yes. this thing. And I saw someone mention like triangular awnings, for example, to put on like it's triangle a, it's foundations. Tricky. So. I, I, wish, I wish we had made a system and, and uh, maybe we will do, I don't know. I wish we would have the ability to polymorph the pieces depending on context. Yeah. Like if you are if you're trying to connect with a, with a corner. Yeah, see here it comes. Spiral staircase, round pillars, <laughs> pointed tower pieces. Yeah. So it's coming. Two by two doors. So <laughs> Because adding adding a new type of corner ending or or, or cap or <laughs> plasma TVs. <laughs> plasma TVs. <laughs> so adding adding those kind of pieces suddenly becomes you don't add one piece. You have to add like eight just to support the usage yeah. of, of that one use case. Yeah. Right. That makes it less attractive. Right. So yeah. And for example, uh people people will bring up like ninety degree angles. Uh like ninety tri- degree angles. No, like tri- triangle pieces <laughs> that are ninety degrees. Uh, so like half, like you slash a, yeah. a, a foundation in half, and that would, for example, that would require adding a wall that's a little bit longer than the wall that we currently have because he has yes. to stand on the on the hypotenuse. Uh, there there are some my math now. So there are some kind of uh, socket connection issues, right? That we always have to solve whenever we yeah. add a new piece. Yeah, that's okay. We'll just look at them and solve them, right? It's more about in some cases. You cannot actually solve it without allowing the piece to polymorph mm-hmm. at the moment of placing. Yeah, allowing the piece to actually guess what it should look like to do whatever the player is trying to do. That becomes more complicated, right? Right. Anyways, next thing. Uh, next thing. Um, all right. Uh, this might be a bit of a tough one, but uh, we're gonna try it eventually. Um, so, Qualea. Uh, yeah, Qualia asks. I lot, think lot right. of, lots of elves today. Yes. Mm. Uh, many official servers have uh, somewhat low populations. If the numbers do not pick up after the pet update, are there any plans to rationalize the total number of servers? If yes, and servers are closed slash removed, would current characters be moved to another server? Um, we don't know yet. Right. That's the short answer. I was thinking on, on how long of an answer I should give on this. Yeah. We actually don't know yet. We are already doing things to try to get people together playing in the same server. Right. Uh, we identified like one of the typical barriers of entry for people starting new in a new server is that, uh, especially in PvP environments, is that, well, they're up against whoever is the current population of that server. Yeah. Which typically would be low. It would be like two or three guys that run some alpha clan with a giant castle in the mountains or whatever. Right, yeah. right? And it's like, there's no point us trying to start in this server. It's going to take us however long to get to the point where we can even start competing with these guys. Yeah. And then during that time, we are at the mercy of whatever they want to do. And it's going to be all cool and dandy at the beginning when it's like, oh, new people, server, hey, yeah. come, whatever. Yeah, 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 we are the alpha clan. Right? But then at some point, when they see that new people actually become a threat because they, these are alpha people to start with, mm-hmm. so they have that mindset, yep. then it's not going to be flower, flowers anymore. And at that point, you just invested 30 days on building up in a new server, and now you have to vacate. Yeah. So this is why we added the 4x XP multiplier right. to yes. PvP servers. Yeah. That's the experiment we're running there. We're trying to see what kind of impact that has, right? Uh, for PvE servers, it's a bit, I mean, the dynamics are not exactly the same, but they're, they're kind of similar, actually. If you don't feel like you have um, the ability to make a difference in a PvE server, like become uh, not necessarily an opposing king or whatever, but, you know, develop and build something cool and just live there with mm-hmm. people, and mm-hmm. you don't feel that way, then you're just not going to... There's no reason for you to try to play in a server with other people. And the, the end result, I mean, over time, servers, of course, lose people because they move or because they move to different games or whatever. Yeah. And then people become lonely and it does not fun for anybody. And I think everyone recognizes that how it's actually not fun to kick people off your server, which is the win condition for most people. Yes. It's like the server is ours. We win. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Now we're alone, right? <laughs> so we're trying to make it as easy as possible for people to restart on yeah. a new server, right? Um, 
that's experiment we're running. We don't have any news about actually merging servers at the moment, but we're trying to, you know, approach this from a, from a social dynamics kind of standpoint, and this is exactly, this is exactly the conversation that led to yeah. the 4X XP multiplier on uh, PV servers. Yep. Yep. All right. <clears throat> um, next up from Sir Dave Wolf. Uh, what do you think about removing all attribute bonuses on all armors and implementing special armor kits that will add one specific attribute bonus to an armor piece? This would allow players to control their builds independently of the armor style. So we get to see all the other cool armors in the game in PvP. These kits can come in three tiers, plus one, plus two, plus three, resulting in a total of 15 stats per armor set. I much rather... Sorry, I'm, I'm gonna go against what you're saying there. It's a, it's a kind of core concept. I much rather make all attributes be useful in PvP. Right. So not everybody wears the same armor, and that's what I would focus my efforts there. Um, I think it's okay if a certain visual style corresponds to a certain character ability to do things. I think right. it's actually positive for the game that you can look at somebody yeah. and be able to recognize what's this guy's deal. That actually helps creating build recognition, planning your strategy, it removes an element of chaos because you know what this guy's about. Yeah. I think the problem there is actually that everybody wears the same gear. Yes. Because some of these attributes are considered to be much stronger than others. Yeah, like people will more often than not probably go for a strength and vitality build rather than uh, encumbrance or survivability. So our, like, our, depending on how they play, of course. So our mission there, and I mean this, this we have already done quite a lot of stuff to try to make what people consider secondary attributes, yeah. like survival, um, attractive to everyone. Right. The mission there is that everybody will want to have all the stats. At all times. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. All I mean, the stats. You will want to have every single stat. There's a there's a bit of a of um segregation there that is on purpose between the melee stuff and the range stuff. Yeah. Because we don't want someone to be an amazing melee fighter and an amazing archer at the same time. That's that's very dangerous. Right. Yeah. For the gameplay dynamics, right? But um or an amazing tank, an amazing DPS, an amazing archer, and I can just shoot rockets right yeah right. is it that, that's not gonna work we want people to be to have to make choices right but we want all the choices to be attractive and all the choices to be valid right so that's basically it. so now the, this is a conscious decision we do not want to support um gameplay transmogs in that way yeah right uh, it gets a bit more complicated when you look at the dlc armors though yes right because um because at some point you, I mean, there you have to do a concession between okay, DLC armor only has this stat, or every DLC has a different stat, or whatever, or okay, well, people that wear DLC armor are basically hiding their spec. Yeah. Right. So yeah, that's we're still it's still um, that we're still talking about that one. I was just replying to someone in uh, chat. Anyway. Um... You're, talk, you're right. talking to people? I'm talking to people while I'm talking to you. How do you talk to people? Is it interesting? <laughs> All right. Uh, here's an interesting one. Um, will Solo from Shadoza. Will Solo co-op players have the opportunity to have more than one save? Uh, I would like to have the opportunity to save the world where I invited a friend to play and a second save where I can play solo in my own world. My friend is in the military and cannot always play, sometimes for over nine months. I would like to keep our shared game for when he returns, while still having the option of changing things up in my own world. I would like to implement that. Um, it's in our list. It's not very high in the list, <laughs> but it is in our list. Um, that's it. Right. Yes, it's a great idea. I would love to have it. Okay, next question. <laughs> next, <laughs> next question. Um, is there a is there a future plan to add some cool player mods directly into the game? Um, yes and no. We do look at what people want from the game, right? And a very good way of looking at what people want is looking at what mods they use, and and we know what mods people use. Yeah. So uh, features that are so prominent and so spread that everybody uses them, we definitely are looking at them. And some of them we have already integrated. A lot of the, a lot of the industry changes that we have done as time goes on have come or be inspired at least by some of the mods that people have made. Yeah. On the other hand, we don't, we do not want to destroy the work that mothers have done. 
and we do not want to steal their thunder, yeah. right? So even though I'm sure that Mother's intention is to just better the game anyways, and I'm sure most of them will be happy with us doing yeah. their stuff, um, there's no reason for us to, for example, do what PP Mod does. Because PP Mod is fantastic, yeah. and it's really great at what it does, and, and implementing all of that would actually be a ton of work for us, and it's completely unnecessary. We, yeah. are, we are perfectly happy with people using PP Mod, and people should use it if they want to yeah right so so yeah we do look at mods and we do look at them for inspiration and to look at them to figure out what features people really want and they don't tell us that they want them but they do want them yep and but no it's not always a the best idea to just you know implement everything that's made in a mod when you look at mods you also need to think about there's a difference between between what the majority of people want and what everybody wants and whatever yeah. we put in the game is for everybody, yeah. not just for the majority. So, and sometimes things like this can, just cannot be a democracy. Yeah. It's not how it works, right? This this might also be a somewhat unpopular statement from from me at least, but mm. sometimes uh, mod creators don't like they they don't have to care about what they break. And it sounds like I'm attacking the modders. I'm absolutely not because they do some amazing work, <clears throat> but like. Uh, sometimes we will add a patch and then something happens with a mod that just breaks the game unfortunately and if that mod uh, mod creator isn't working on it anymore then well tough luck to whoever's well, uh, using that mod. in that case it actually would help if we would have implemented what the mod maker made i, I guess because yeah, then, I'm, we, then I'm, we would have to maintain i'm speaking right? from a very like dumb non-technical standpoint <laughs> because like you're you're the technical person i just do marketing <laughs> I'm uh, just a pretty face. So the, the bottom somewhat. line, the bottom line there is, we absolutely love that people are making mods for the game. We mods are a fantastic source of, insp of inspiration in general on any game to yeah. just try to, f to figure out what the players really want, right? But just because a feature is popular doesn't mean it should be in the game. Right. It should be in the game for those people that like the feature and yeah. very popular which is not everybody and some features that are really popular are not for everybody sure yes right um and it's very difficult for the people in the group that that like the thing to realize how you know this thing that you really like it, those guys really hate it it yeah. will actually make them stop playing the game so you play with the mod and they play without it and everybody's happy right um i have some news actually about the the um, What's the name? What's the technical name of this? I don't want to. I don't want to mess up the technical name. Is it, is it Auto one? mod downloader. How yes. do you find it before <laughs> I do? You haven't never seen this document. <sighs> so super eyes. The auto mod downloader. It's not, it's not super eyes because I have to wear glasses. But yeah. The auto mod downloader is basically a system by which, when you connect to a server, you will get the mods the server uses. Yeah. And this is just like it happens, right? Um, it's almost finished getting implemented almost finished right and is almost ready to enter actual playtesting phase so this is coming and uh, then you will have the ability to you know you run a private server and you want to set the rules for your server you want this particular rp pack or you want everybody in the server to use pp mod or not mm -hmm. to use pp mod right then you can set the rules and say okay yeah. there you go these are the mods that this server runs right and then of course it puts responsibility on the server admins to make sure that the mods they're running are not actually making the experience worse but i mean that's your job as a server i mean to start with anyways if people don't like what you do they will not play in your server sure they will yeah. so again it's about putting the responsibility in the hands of giving players the power to alter the game in any way they want yeah but we need to care about the integrity of the game as a whole for everybody and not every popular choice is the best choice for the game right for everybody yeah right so that's it um all right with that being said mods are great yeah. some of the mods that we have the, the mod community is fantastic and some of the mods that we have are ridiculous they're amazing oh yeah absolutely and and thank you thank you very much for making mods for our game we love you guys please keep doing that yes yeah. uh, like check out anything just josh, josh tech is doing like or x cookie monster or something on steam like he is yeah. super good it's really does. really talented people spending their their free time and many many hours of, of very complicated work to yeah. make stuff for 
for you guys and and for us right right so yeah, yeah we do appreciate that uh, we're, we're not saying that you should stop playing official servers uh but like if you know if you find a mod that you think enhances your game experience like go for it you know or if you find an unofficial server that uses a mod that you enjoy then jump into that like we we want you guys to sort of use the tools available to craft your own experience basically it's choice i mean the moment we decided to put mods in the game we decided that we wanted people to personalize their experience yeah and to do crazy things you want to make do you want to make characters walking around with alien heads that's, that's your prerogative do whatever you want that's what the yeah. game has mods it's probably someone who's going to make that you should can Someone, little antenna things. Andragon Firefly told me to have another beer, so I, I had some beer. Uh, all right, all right. I think we're gonna do one more. Only one, one more. On, only one final one, this, and then we're gonna raffle away the gaming chair. This this wasn't an hour. You have some kind of. This is an hour. Time See, space. That's numbers. It nine. is ten past six. That's a time You've space. You've gone for machine. one hour and five minutes. You're even. Doctor Strange, aren't you? Yeah. Mm. Uh, important feedback from Twitch stream. We need more anime armors DLC. Do so we? I don't know if you can start like working on some sort of like do super, we? super Saiyan like. Do uh, we need some Weibo stuff? Like, uh, Vegeta, Planet Vegeta type <sighs> armor thing. You know what? Somebody <laughs> should make a mod. Someone's probably done that already. <laughs> Somebody should make a mod with uh, anime armors. I mean, someone, yeah. someone might have done that. See, this is exactly what mods are for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm gonna do one more. Um, oh yeah, does did you have to? I have, I, have, I have. At some point, we <laughs> we didn't even go over the like. Okay, okay, we're ready. Okay. What, what do you want to talk about? Do you oh want no, to talk no, about no, something? I'm fine. I'm fine. I, I, do you have a suggestion? I, ha I have something. I have something for the end. But go on. Okay. Shoot. Uh, final thing from Palm Five Twenty Two, uh, who says that Palm uh, Five. Palm 522. Okay. It used to be 521, but then now it's 522. Mm. Uh, buildings are sometimes a pain to load, especially when a base is particularly large. You've talked about improvements to the buildings before. What kind of improve improvements can we expect to see and when? Mm. That's a good one. Okay, so we are working on... Uh, on um, I'm going to use technical terms. Please please don't leave. Don't get scared. <laughs> uh, please stay because we're raffling away a chair. Oh! So they have to stay. Okay. Yes. Good. So uh, we we are working on on persistence improvements for the building uh, storage system. Basically, um, we are doing testing on this. It's not it's not quite finished yet. I think some of you that are in the kind of in the loop for the mod community and stuff, people that talk with uh, Nicola a lot, yeah, you know, because I mean this is his baby and he he talks about it also all the time. So he actually has been working on this for quite some time and trying to reduce the the not only the memory footprint of uh, buildings but also and most importantly the loading speeds of anything that's persisted yeah right and the bigger problem there is buildings buildings are it's very easy to actually end up with a building that's thousands of pieces you don't even notice there's actually thousands of pieces on your little pyramid and Getting all that to load quickly enough, but that's a that's a technical challenge. Right? Yeah. So Nicola has been working on these. I have some hard actually hard numbers on these, which are pretty amazing. Give so, us the hard numbers. So Just the hardest of He's numbers. working from from databases that we have gotten from some servers, which I guarantee you have absolutely extreme buildings. These things are these things are ridiculous. You wouldn't believe like fifty thousand building pieces. This, no, <laughs> like huge. <laughs> That's just big. I mean, huge stuff, right? So, and the test is basically pretty straightforward: is how quickly can this whole thing load? Right. So, in some of the, we have seen absolutely dramatic improvements on this. And just to give you an example, a base that used to take three minutes to load. Right. This is three minutes for the base to load. This is how big the base was now loads in less than 20 seconds that's quick so this is the kind of stuff that we are testing is is crazy so this is gonna go to test life soon for everyone to test because and it needs testing because it needs a lot of testing i mean obviously. it's gone through a lot already but it's gonna it needs more so this also the, what you are gonna see in the game is that when you approach a base that's ginormous and for you as the as the player this thing is gonna load much faster right yeah Right, but on the, on the server side of things, the server is going to be under way less stress for what's going on there. So the server doesn't need to be if there's a number of people running around this place, 
the server is constantly trying to catch up to load all these and yeah. trying to throttle that and trying to give some time to that, give some time to AI. AI starts doing weird things, right? So this improvement will affect a ton of stuff and it's absolutely, it's dramatic, you, you will see. So yes, that's what we have for building yeah. stuff. There's also something, this is a bit more like on my field of things, a bit more like design wishy-washy stuff, but yeah. um, we are also looking at um, changing the paradigm a little bit for how people construct the bases. Not, we wouldn't change it you guys would change it we're trying to alter your behavior no just change your basis right? yeah so right now it is pretty standard for people to build these kind of ginormous factorial setups of eight furnaces churning out bricks so they can do reinforced bricks yeah. and then blacksmiths churning out steel reinforcements and all the stuff and it's like you place a furnace and you don't place one furnace you place eight furnaces and eight tanneries and 200 honey <laughs> like um honeycombs or whatever right so a uh, beehives sorry so we are looking at that and we're actually looking at why people do that yeah so we're looking at at changing the paradigm a little bit so to give you more options so instead of having to make because you do that because you feel like you have to in order to keep up with the production that you need yeah for basic transformation of materials right instead of doing that we would make it so uh, you can you can multiplex things or you can build things in bundles for example right so you don't need to make eight furnaces when one furnace gives you the yield of eight furnaces then you just make one furnace right and there's a point where it's just too much so you just are not going to bother making more furnaces than you need because they take a lot of space or whatever yeah you can still build 200 like two columns of 200 furnaces because you want to make m moria or whatever yeah that's fine you can still do that but at least it won't feel like it's a gameplay need to do this because right now it feels like that right, right. so we're looking basically at making your your crafting stations specifically the machines level up like go up right not just get fatter but get taller right and uh, that will help with um building as well because now there is there's going to be less of these stations all over the place yeah right it also puts more importance on you know your layout for your base and and properly defending your things like if, if you have to if, if your crafting stations is suddenly become very expensive and an investment that you have to do over time to be able yeah. to you know increase them in level or whatever and with level i don't mean they gain xp and you level them out that's not what i mean it's more right. like tiers right but tiers that cost to build on stuff so well your tier five furnace is expensive you don't want to lose it so you need to be your base around that concept. Yeah. Right. OK. Um, that is the end of the Q&A part. Um, Aw. Sorry if we didn't get to r get around to answering your question. Like, but we, because like I had, we had three three pages. Here they are. My three pages yeah, of three. questions. I have We got through two. two. So we got, to, we did manage to go through a lot of them. Um, you know, oh, we we need to stop doing this. It's gonna be a screen caps and freezes and like zoom in and all the text. Yeah. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Mm. All right, so we're gonna move on. We're gonna raffle away a gaming chair, um, and uh, the gaming chair looks like this. It is uh, given to us from our uh, <clears throat> good friends at Stack Up, which is a charity organization that we um, that we worked with around uh, launch for a uh, charity event where we had streamers play the game for an entire weekend. They would um, uh, they would do a bunch of uh, donation drives and all that kind of stuff. And uh, in total, we managed to uh, to raise. That's the question I'm looking for. We managed to raise over ten thousand dollars for yes. charity uh, directly to Stack Up, which I'm very very proud of. And so they uh, they emailed me like uh, a couple of weeks ago and just said like, hey. Since you managed to raise this much money, like you can give away this chair to a player or to a, to a veteran if you know someone. And I just asked, hey, can we give it away on the stream? They said, yes, yes, you can. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, this is only going to be available to people uh, in our Twitch chat. The reason for that, as I've, uh, I've said a couple of times before already, is that sadly right now Mixer doesn't allow you to uh, DM someone. So it's a bit of a it, it takes a lot of work to get a hold of people because even if they win, you, you try to whisper to them, and then it, that's difficult. And maybe not everyone has a uh, like a full Microsoft account. You can't. It's it's a whole hassle. It's easier 
to do it on Twitch, basically. So, so, so how do people become eligible to get this chair? Well, uh, first off, I am going to click this button that says open. You click the button. I click the button. Beep, beep. Boop, boop. So if you're in our Twitch chat, just type exclamation point raffle, and then you will be added into the raffle. And then like five seconds from now, Twitch chat is going to go. And uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> This is this is so, magical. This yeah. is like I'm just gonna let this run for for a few. I seconds. wonder. I wonder what kind of experiments you could run with this concept. <laughs> it's like how how else do you get? How, how many people do we have right now watching? In in on Twitch we have 402 people. How do you get, how do thing. you get 400 test subjects to try some <laughs> random conditioning thing? <laughs> just tell them to type exclamation raffle in chat. <laughs> yep. So this is going to be interesting because now it's it's all it's all just raffling. We're going to let this run for 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 a bit of a time more. Like if you if you've said raffle once, you don't have to do it again. It's a one one entry one thing. Yeah, good luck. Thing, with thing. That. Yeah. So it's a <laughs> so yeah. Does that ever work? Does it never work? I it? don't I don't know. Yeah. This is the first time I've tried it. All right. Uh, John Ben says that he's just here for the t-shirts. Thank you. If you missed it, because you missed half my t-shirt, it says existence oh, is pain. You got a great t-shirt. Yeah, so I'd have to lean back and do this. So um, Very nice. All right. Well, all right, I'm going to let it run for a bit more. Let everyone... If you're, if you're coming ruffle, in late... It's a ruffle. It's not a funny ruffle. <laughs> Fussy ruffle, funny ruffle. Hey, Cletus! Nice to see you again. Uh, he was one of the streamers who uh, hung out on our... who um, who participated in the uh, the live streams that we did. The, um, the charity live streams. All right. I'm going to let it run for a couple more seconds. And by the way, in case you're wondering, like the announcement that we did on Twitter was for this giveaway, for, for this chair right here. And we didn't mean to say that we were giving... A, like, we were... There wasn't going to be an announcement on the stream. The well, announcement was that we were giving away this this chair right 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 there. Right. Can I move it? Right can there. I move it with my finger? I mean, you can like, you can touch yeah, it. <laughs> <like this. yeah. laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to close this now. Close it. And so from now on, there's no more. The raffle is closed. You're gonna have to stop. You're gonna stop typing exclamation stop. mark raffle because the, now. Yeah, because then it takes like ten seconds for chat to catch up. Yeah. So we're like ten. We're in the future. <laughs> ten seconds ahead. <laughs> Are they actually stopping? No. Well, yeah, raffle close says the law. Wow. XP. Amazing. He's real good. He's the one Are who they, did they actually stop or is he gagging? No, well some of them are still are still going. Anyway. Wow. Alright. So much power. You have so much power. Yet. And the winner is I'm just gonna click this button and it says draw. Beep beep boop boop. And the winner is I'm a Rocket Man, who I'm is following man. us on uh, Twitch. Thank you so much for following us. Congratulations! I'm gonna announce him as a I'm winner. a Rocket Man. He is a Rocket Man. Uh, he doesn't have an icon, but he should uh, take care of that. Congratulations! You are the winner. I'm just gonna type to him right now. Congrats! Congratulations! You are the winner of a brand new, uh, custom-made. Stack up branded DX uh, racing chair. You are now the chairman, as <laughs> Sticks Awesome points out in Twitch chat. So uh, congratulations! I hope you like uh, how the uh, chair looks, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna DM him. We're gonna get his address. We're gonna send that off to Stack Up, and then as far as I know, it's gonna be sent out in. Um, it should arrive no later than uh, November ish. Like they're being they're being made right now, but they have a bunch of these being made. So um, all right, uh, that's gonna be it. For this week, I had one thing. You have one thing. Go. Sorry, I know you wanna you wanna you know wrap it, but I have Do one your thing. thing. One Do thing. Your thing. Um, we actually had many, but we already talked about most of them. <laughs> we have been fixing a lot of bugs, and I know there's a bug that people will be happy to hear about, which is that we have addressed the issues with uh, traps and uh, fire damage in general, like for example, uh, combo fields from combining oil with fire, right? Doing damage in situations where they should not be doing damage so for example these things would in certain conditions they could actually damage the structures outside of pvp uh, windows right or in pve servers in general we that's one of the kind of big ones that we have fixed we have also fixed an 
pretty large number of problems with thralls in general, uh, including um, issues with being able to dupe thralls around. Sweet. Right? Uh, which I won't go into details, but we have fixed those. So I thought people would like to know about this. They, they have been pretty serious problems for us and, and they weren't easy to fix, but they're fixed now. All right, they will come out very soon, TM. Very soon, TM. And uh, all right, uh, thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Oscar, thank you for sitting down thank and you, answering yes. people's questions. Uh, thank you to Nicole for you, Nicole. Uh, moderating chat. Thank you very much to Carbuncle for moderating Mixer chat. And I do believe Nicole has chosen someone that we can um, that we can uh, <clears throat> raid on Mixer. So oh, I if, love this part. So if uh, Nicole can just uh, get on that real quick. I love this can, part. Uh, you see in the faces, he's like, what is going and, on? And uh, then we can uh, get going. So Nicole, do the thing. And it's counting down. And then we're going we're gonna to switch over to this. And we're going to say bye.